Good morning, everybody, everyone. Glad to have you with us today, believe it or not. Today, we celebrate 222 years of serving the Lord as Queen Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church. And guess what? It's the place where Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus is Lord in this station. Now, after 227 years, we really ought to thank God for just being alive. Is that right? Amen. And guess what? We don't look half as old as we are. 220 years. And we still kick. Thanks to be to God. We've expanded something. God has been good to us. You ought to look at your neighbor. You ought to look at your friends and say, my God. Hasn't God been good to this uh, part of Zion? Yes, he has. You know, over the, the last 220 years, we've had many people to come through this church. Many people who have worked for the kingdom of God. Many people who have given God praise and glory. And many people who have given their life to Christ. And we thank God for that. The church has had many ministers and, uh, who have joined us. I couldn't go through the list of all those people who were ministers here and who were on the ministerial staff here over the years. Uh, this 220. So we come together and say, Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. And Lord, we want to make it absolutely clear to you that it, none of this would have happened if it hadn't been for you on our side. You are the great one. You are the king of kings, the lord of lords. You are uh, the alpha of the omega. You are the great I am that you are. You are the God who is sufficient in himself. Didn't need us. But we want to come today and say to you, thank you for using us and making us who we are in spite of the fact you didn't need us. Lord, we love you because you first loved us. So today, 222 years later, we are thankful to God. Well, Father, we want to pray. Then I'll come back and say a number of words or two about some of the things that God has allowed us to do uh, in the last couple of years, okay? Or 200 some years, okay? Uh, eternal God, thank you today for this opportunity to be called the children of the living God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for, for uh, saving us, Lord God. Thank you for taking away our guilt, our shame, uh, and Lord, our, 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 our possibility of going to hell. You took that away from it. It was a sure thing. I said a possibility. It was a sure thing, but because of the blood of Jesus Christ, you have redeemed us, and we are thankful to you today. So God, we thank you for all the people who are listening to us today. Thank you for all the people, Lord God, who have, has made this experience wonderful for us, who have, have us, uh, labored in the work of God to help others to come to know you and to work in this, this place called Quinn Chapel, a, a part of the kingdom of God. Thank you so very much. So, Lord, we are thanking for what you've done. We are praying, Lord God, that you will continually bless us and walk with us and encourage us along the way. And Lord, as the word of God comes for us today, we ask you to anoint the preacher, Lord God, that, that almost a 222nd year of our, our, our being, Lord, as a church, uh, that the word that comes forth will be a word of encouragement, a word of strength, and a word of power. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we give you the thanks, the praise, and the glory. Amen and amen. Well, you know, uh, um, first of all, I want to say to you that I thank you for joining in again. I want to say that again. I want to thank God for all of the uh, people who have served this church over the years. All of the pastors, all of the members, all of those. And, and, and we look to see them in glory one day because of that commitment of their lives to Christ. Now, you know, um, just not too long ago, uh, not too long ago, uh, beginning of this year, uh, God laid on our heart a global prayer outreach ministry. And in that process, you see this globe up here, and I constantly remind you uh, uh, that all, this globe represents all of the nations and all of the peoples of the world, and this is what God says about it. God says about all of the peoples of the world, he says this, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Guess what? That includes all of us. That includes me, includes you, includes those of, of us who are here today. It includes everybody. God is saying, uh, I love you so much that I want everybody to be saved. 
So God laid on my heart and, 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 and have laid on our church's heart now to be able to pray. We, we purchased the globe, and um, the globe is a constant reminder of all these people that God loves. And so we, we some, from time to time, we just, we just pull out of people. Like the whole, whole, whole area of Australia, great big land, land mass, and all those people there. And so many of them are not saved. But there are people there that would be saved if we prayed for them. And then we look at the people of China. We look at the people of Africa. Uh, the people of Asia, Lord. And the people of South America. And, and, and we can't help but look at the people of, of North America. That's where we are. But we look at the whole world. And we look at Central America, the Philippines. And, and the world goes on. And so what we want to do is, uh, first of all, uh, thank God for loving everybody. And then we want to secondly take a moment right now, and I'm going to pray for some of these people. Some of us are right now and ask God to bless these people all around the world. Father, right now we are living in a crisis time. Things are going on. Uh, it's, it's just difficult for so many people, so many trials, tribulations, and so many people are lost and have not come to know you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a mind to pray for the, the people of the Philippines, Lord God. The, the, the people of Australia, the people of Indonesia, the people of China, the people of Africa, the whole continent of Africa, the whole nations of Africa, all of Europe, and, and Lord God, North and South America, Central America, and Lord God, all the people out in the oceans, way out scattered all around the globe, the, the, the islands and, and all the continents, and they, all of them, Lord God. We pray right now, God, that you pour out your anointing and your blessings on them. And Lord God, we focus in right now. We're coming in. We're coming. We focus in on the United States, Lord God. We ask you to bless uh, uh, the leadership of this country so that we won't uh, um, destroy this country, Lord God. We ask you to bless the leadership of the nation, Lord God. Bless this president. Bless bless the, those people in Congress, Lord. Change their heart. Help them to see it and follow you, God. It's about you. Amen. Then we're going to focus in on the state of Maryland. We're getting close now. Uh, Lord, we pray for the state of Maryland. We pray for its governor and its governor to be, uh, to be as we will be electing a new governor and, and uh, this coming uh, uh, year. So, God, we're asking you to bless all of that. And then we want to focus in on Frederick County, Lord. And we ask you to bless all the people of Frederick County, and that would include Thurmond, Frederick City, etc. And uh, uh, any place that's uh, part of Frederick County. And then we want to look at where we are situated right now in or at Frederick City. And we ask you to bless the people. But God, we are just asking you to pour out your spirit on all the people in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, again, I want to ask you to get a globe. We're not worshiping the globe, no, we're not doing that. But we're, we're, we're having the globe to remind us that God loves all of us. And uh, yes, uh, and if you accept the gift of God, you will be saved. But if everybody, because God loves the whole world, will not be saved unless you respond to it. So that's why we need to pray. So people can come down to know the Lord. Somebody ought to say amen. Praise God for that. Amen. Well, I told you it was 222 years, and we are no ways tired, as, as the saying goes. And so we thank God for that. But over, over the last um, 222 years, um, many things have been done through this church. Uh, and I just want to highlight a couple of things that has happened. Um, during, during the time of the Civil War, when we were trying to, uh, when the Lord was moving to get us out of slavery uh, around the country, uh, Fred, this church was involved in that experience. Uh -huh. We began in 1800, the Civil War was in 1860, and the war ended in 65. But during the Civil War, uh, Queen Chapel was a part, uh, it's, uh, in our main uh, sanctuary down at the, uh, on 3rd Street. Uh, 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 what happened there was uh, the, the basement of our church was used uh, as a hospital uh, in, the, in the Battle of Monocacy uh, under Abraham Lincoln. And, and we thank God for that and, 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 and the, the Union trying to uh, 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 win the war that eventually would uh, help us in a major kind of way of setting us free. So we thank God for that. And then in our 
our sanctuary on the uh, same place. Uh, we uh, used the basement of the church here, was used as a, a school uh, for uh, African Americans uh, at that particular time, and we thank God for that as well. Uh, we've been a leader in helping um, African Americans make it in a very difficult time, 222 years. Not only that, we have um, worked and uh, we helped build the church in India. So not help build the church, we funded the church. We built the doggone church, amen, <laughs> in India. I mean, it's, it's interesting. Uh, God is not a racist, and so we worked to help. Not only did that happen, um, we also, we did mission work in, and still do in, 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 in Central America, especially in, in, in El Salvador. Uh, for the last 20 years, uh, we've been involved with that and helping uh, the people there uh, get on their feet. Not only that, but uh, just to tell you how God has used us, and we need to celebrate and give God the praise. And in 2010, there was a major earthquake uh, in, um, in Haiti. And this church took, uh, put forth an effort, and they raised $10,000 to send to help the people of Haiti to recover. And we thank God for that. So we've, we've done some major things. Um, there was this incident in recent days, 2000, I think it was 2002, yeah, uh, that um, uh, our church was instrumental in helping uh, to keep the Ten Commandments in the Memorial Park here in the city. And by the grace of God and by the work of the people of this congregation who led many people, uh, black and white and Hispanics and others who had a mind for the work of Jesus Christ. Uh, we, we thank God for those who were able to help today to say that Jesus Christ is so important and we should follow him. So we've been following him. Then, just to help you, this is about the last thing, there's so many things we can talk about. But, but what I'm saying is that God has used us at, for, at, for 222 years. For the last, oh, I guess, since 1984 here, uh, up to today, we have been working in the prison ministries. We've been encouraging people in the ministry. Our ministerial staff have been ministering there and all of this kind of thing. And we thank God for what he has allowed us to do. We have helped people to come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We have fed the hungry. We have clothed the naked. We have followed those things that the Bible told us to do. And, 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 and man, we are excited about God. We are excited about those of you from our congregation who have worked and have worked not only amongst ourselves, but with other congregations, with other people, to even save the lives of children who are being aborted. We took a stand. So I want you to know that 222 years have not been in vain. God bless his name for using us, and God bless you for using, uh, taking your time to make a difference in our community and in our county, our state, our nation, and now with this global outreach with the whole world. God bless you. I've been talking uh, uh, about um, uh, all the things that God has allowed us to do, but the main thing is, is the word of God, amen? God's word is so important, okay? And I'm gonna read a portion of scripture to you today and before the message is brought forth, okay? All right, in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, if you have your Bibles, please turn there with me. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29. And I'm gonna be reading from Verse 29, Hebrews 11, 29, I will be reading all the way through to Hebrews 12, verse 2. So that will be, if you start with me in verse um, uh, uh, 39, uh, 29, chapter 11, we're going to read all the way over until uh, Hebrews 12, and 2. I'm ready. Are you, do you have your Bible? If you have your Bible, look this way. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. Whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe 
when she had received the spies with peace. Verse 22. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and of Samson and Jethro and also David and Samuel and, and the prophets who through faith subdued the kingdom, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the voice, the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness they were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the arms of the aliens. Women received their dead, rise, raised to life again. Others were, who were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may obtain a better resurrection. Still others had, had trials of mockings and scourgings, yes, of chains and imprisonments. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were tempted, were slain with a the sword. They wandered, uh, in, uh, wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, uh, being destitute, being afflicted, being tormented. Yes, being tormented. Of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and in caves of the earth. And all these having obtained a good testimony through faith. Did not receive the promise. God having promised something better for us. That they should not be made perfect apart from us. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, for this reason, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a crowd of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensna uh, ensnare us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Verse 2 in the last verse. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen for the reading of God. Today our sub theme is sort of experiencing God's glory. After 222 years, we are experiencing God's glory. He has blessed. As I mentioned earlier, we've had numerous preachers to be on our staff over the years. Um, and the uh, last uh, about 30, almost 39 years that I've been here, we've had many preachers to come this way who have been a part of our experience and who have uh, gone on to pastor for themselves. And, and uh, uh, we are excited about it. Some of them uh, have retired and some of them are still going forth. And but today, it's our homecoming celebration. We call this anniversary uh, September the 3rd Sunday and um, uh, uh, September, which is today is the, uh, September the 18th. We call it homecoming. And uh, today, uh, we're so happy. We're so happy to have one of our own preachers, one of our own, who started here years ago, to come today to share with us at homecoming. We have with us today, none other than uh, Pastor Murdoch C. Hudson, who started on the ministerial staff here years ago and worked diligently in our church and has been a faithful uh, expositor of the Word of God, faithful servant in the prisons that I talked to you about. He was part of that prison staff, uh, and, and then uh, God kept de dealing with him until the point where uh, God placed him in a church. And for the last 15 years of his life, he's been an outstanding pastor and, um, in Allegheny County, which is in Western Maryland. Uh, he, he pastored in Frostburg, Maryland uh, at Dixon African Methodist Episcopal Church. And man, he has done tremendous work there. I'm glad that we were a part of his experience and he was a part of our experience. We are excited today, beloved, to have with us today our very own 
Reverend Murda C. Hudson, who is coming today to share with us a word from the Lord. And I believe this word from the Lord is going to bless us on this 222nd anniversary. This word from the Lord is going to encourage us and strengthen us so that we can go forth. And uh, we're thankful for the fact that he, his wife, uh, Sister uh, Michelle Hudson, and their two children have been a part of our experience, and they have been a part of the ministry. And so, Lord, we thank God that they are here with us today. So we want to uh, be mindful of the fact uh, that uh, the Lord is going to bless us today. So, uh, Reverend Hudson, at this time, Reverend Murder C. Hudson is going to come. He's going to share the word of God with us. Why don't you pray with the Father in the name of Jesus. Bless this man of God as he comes. And let the words that we hear today spark us to not only remember the 222 years, but remember there's a lot of work we have to do for Jesus Christ. Let us experience uh, uh, your great glory, God, as the man of God preaches. Come, Reverend Hudson. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be very glad in it. First, giving honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for in him we live, move, and have our being. And to Pastor Robinson, the shepherd of this house, I thank you for this esteemed honor to stand before you today. I thank the officers and members of this historic church and congregation, Quinn Chapel A.M.E. Church, but just allow me to be with you on this day of celebration. Today, we gather to celebrate homecoming, to celebrate an anniversary. This is a special day in the life of the church, as you have heard already enumerated. Many of the things that, that God has allowed this church, this congregation to accomplish over the years. We thank and praise God for that. For 222 years, this congregation has served the people of this community. Two centuries, two scores, and two years, God has kept this church. Wow. Somebody ought to say, hallelujah. Amen. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Today is a special day for Sister Hudson and I. It is a welcome home, and it is also in some ways a goodbye. It was 15 years ago that we were sent to this place to this place called Dickerson Amy Church in Frostburg, Maryland. There we labored uh, it joyfully for the kingdom of God. But when that season was ended, it was time to come home. I, I don't know about you, but I think it's always good to come home. Uh, there are many ways to frame a construct of home. We can think of home as the place we live, or we can think of it as the place of our origin. It can be thought of as the place where one's family resides. Sometimes life takes us to various places in the country and indeed in the world. Amen. For various reasons, we leave home and venture out into the world. Many times we leave seeking to fulfill our goals and ambitions. Uh, it may be for fame or it may be for fortune. It may be for employment or it may be for love. It may be for a better opportunity, or it may be to escape a difficult reality. Whatever the case, God cares for you, and God cares for the people that receive you in their midst wherever you went. The scripture tells us that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him Hallelujah. might be saved. Mm -hmm. uh, whether, wherever we go, we should always be mindful that we are children of the king. We belong to the household of faith. We belong to the church, and we are called to walk by faith and not by sight. We are called to live faithfully, even in a foreign land. And so, my brothers and sisters, my message for today is don't give up. The text has already been read, Hebrews 11, 29 through chapter 12, 2. And for text verse 12a, 2a, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith.
for a subject, don't give up. Don't give up. As church folks, we have a way of talking sometimes that those who are not in the church uh, can't really understand. It is not that we don't want to communicate uh, with the non-church folks. Sometimes we forget that they just don't speak the language. Sometimes we forget that they don't uh, haven't been trained sufficiently to know what we are talking about. Sometimes we forget, and we should always be mindful of assisting them to understand when we talk about Jesus and, and what he's done for us. We should be mindful to guide them in their learning and to be uh, supportive in them. Almost every niche of people in every endeavor has its own language and way of speaking and way of talking. Many years ago, when I was a young man and I served in the army, we used certain phrases and expressions. Uh, we knew at least, we thought we knew what we were talking about. But sometimes we really did not. Sometimes some folk didn't even have a clue. The military talks about sit reps, op tempo, stand to, reveille and retreat, and, and morning parade, and on and on and on. Uh, I heard someone say a couple of days ago that they, they had to go down range. I, I know what I thought they were talking about and what I thought it meant, but but I did not have a clue as to where they were going. I live in Frederick. Fort Dietrich is three minutes from my home, three minutes from my front door. D there is no downrange on Fort Dietrich. I don't have a clue as to where they were going. Different talk, different talk. I remember being invited to a GI party, and I got excited. They're finally going to give us GIs a party. That is wonderful. I like it. I like the idea. Just tell me what it is and where it is. Never dawned on me, never dawned on me that there was an option to refuse. You couldn't refuse a GI party. 7 o'clock, right after chow. Be there. Don't be late. Got to the GI party and it was most disappointed. Most disappointed. A GI party is not a party. It is a cleaning affair where everything in the building and grounds is made spick and span from top to bottom. It's a cleaning affair. I was very disappointed. <laughs> Let me pause. Let me pause and pray. Eternal loving God, I thank you now thank you, Lord. for this time of preaching. That's right. Hide me behind the cross that I will not be seen but only you. And dear Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in my sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We have a way of talking in the church that those who are not in the church may not understand. If when we have a visitor, if we don't take the time to show them how the hymns are, or somebody take the time to show them how the hymns are lined out in the hymn book, I don't think they can follow us that readily and cannot join in in the singing of praises to God. And, and so today, I want to talk about a very foundational concept in Christian doctrine. That concept is the concept of faith. I suppose most of us have a working understanding of the word of faith. Mm -hmm. But do we have an understanding from the spiritual doctrinal perspective? We can look the word faith up in the dictionary, or we can Google the word, or even ask Siri for a definition for the word. It is more likely than not that the definition that you will get is faith is complete trust and confidence uh, in someone or something. That's right. uh, some of the synonyms that you may get will be trust, belief, confidence, conviction, credence, reliance, dependence, acceptance, all these are wonderfully and nice synonyms. And that's really a nice definition. Faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. I have confidence that this chair will hold me if I sit in it. I have trust that when I get paid, I can go to the bank and withdraw my money that was deposited electronically and they will let me do so. But faith is more than that. Faith is complete confidence or 
trust in someone or something, and yet still it is more. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Church, you have got to have hope with faith. Hebrews 11 provides the raw material for drawing a profile of faith as it has characterized the people of God throughout salvation history. It is not simply a, a belief. Faith is not simply belief that there is a God but trust that God rewards those who seek him. Yes. Faith also hopes looking beyond the immediate circumstance to God's promised future, looking beyond the woes of this world, looking beyond the trials and tribulations, looking beyond the trouble in our way, looking beyond the toils and snares. Faith always allows us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. You may not see a way to go. Faith says the Lord will make a way somehow. Faith is tenacious. Faith is enduring. Able to accept promises deferred in the conviction that even death, even death itself does not know God's promises. Faith is courageous, acting often in the face of kingly edicts, royal fury, and presidential foolishness. Faith is subjective to be sure, a conviction firmly and deeply held, but it's more than just subjective. It is more, much more than that. It is the essence, the very being of things hoped for. Chapter 11 of Hebrews is the faith chapter. It offers two portraits of the life of faith. One image is filled with triumph and victory over all enemies, with dramatic deliverance from all threats and dangers, even death. The other portrait is marked by torture, public mockings, imprisonment, beatings, stonings, homelessness, destitution, hiding in caves, and violent death. We can call a chapter 11, or we can call Hebrews the faith chapter, or we can call it triumph and tragedy. We can call it the faith chapter, or we can call it success and failure. Whatever you choose to call it, this chapter describes the life of trust in God. Whatever the circumstance, whatever the situation, whatever you are going through, keep your hands and your eyes fixed on Jesus. Whether it is triumph and tragedy, or you call it success and failure, both is faith. Both is faith. Faith does not calculate results as so as to believe, nor can an observer look at one's lot in life and ascertain the depth of their faith. Hebrews is simply reporting on what has always been true among God's believers, among God's people. The reasons for the differences are hidden. Hidden, veiled in the purposes of God. Tempted and tried. We're often made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long. While there are others living about us, never molested, though in the wrong. The hymnologist went on to say, when death has come and taken our loved ones, it leaves our home so lonely and drear. Then do we wonder why others prosper, living so wicked year after year. Faithful till death, said our loving master. A few more days to labor and wait. Toils of the road will then seem as nothing as we sweep through the beautiful gate. When we see Jesus, yes. when we see Jesus coming in glory, when he comes from his home in the sky, then we shall meet him in that bright mansion. We'll understand it all by and by. Thank you. Farther along, mm -hmm. we'll know all about it. Farther along, mm -hmm. we'll understand why. Right. Cheer up, my brother. And sisters too. Cheer up. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Triumph and tragedy. Success or failure. All is faith. All is hidden in God's purposes. Look at the heroes of faith. The list grows day by day. Look at the first martyr of the Christian faith. Look at the mighty cloud of witnesses. Look at a man whose name was Stephen. He was full of faith and, and power and did great wonders and miracles among the people. While he ministered by serving meals, he might have healed the sick. 
He might have given the sight to the blind. He might have made the deaf to hear. He might have given strength to limbs that were lame. He might have placed the articulation of speech in the mouth of a meter. He was a man full of faith and power and did great wonders and miracles among the people. He was a witness for Jesus Christ. But witnessing for Christ uh, might cost you something in spite of all the good that he did, in spite of the hungry widows he fed, in spite of the great wonders he did, in spite of the miracles he did. There arose certain men uh, of the devil's camp. Uh, don't you know when you do good, the devil will come after you? Don't you know when you do good works, the devil will get on your case uh, in spite of the good he did? There arose certain men of the devil's camp from the Cyrenians and Alexandrians and Libertines came arguing, and there were probably folk that looked just like you and me arguing with Stephen. But I want you to know today that when you have the Holy Ghost on your side and you speak the word of truth, no man, no man can stand up against you. No man can dispute against you because you speak with the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Men who are good report, full of, uh, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom uh, can go. They can go and be a witness for Christ. And no one can dispute against you or the spirit by which you speak. Here we stand. Here we stand uh, in the shadow of a mighty cloud of witness. A mighty cloud that has been joined by your forefathers and your foremothers uh, uh, who worship here at Queen Chapel AME Church. Uh, we came through many dangers seen and unseen. We came through many dangers, soils, and snakes. Those who labored for the kingdom, those who worked for the kingdom, those who bear uh, the weight of the kingdom, we knew by faith that God will not fail them. Uh, although their voices have fallen silent, I can still hear the echo of their voices. I can still hear the echo of their witnesses. I can still hear the voice of Elaine Murrell, Rebecca Barnes, Clarabelle Howard, Austin Timpson, Janice Williams, Peggy Cosley, Darlene Lindsay, Harriet Palmer, Sarah Thompson, and many, many others with who laid and worked for the kingdom of God right here at Queen Chapel AME Church. Although many of the descendants of this church have been scattered to all parts of the world, scattered throughout the earth, gone out for whatever reason, gone out for whatever reason, God is yet still with them. We know by faith that God is with them and that God will not leave nor forsake them. We believe by faith the promises of Isaiah 43 and 5. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my son from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Many, many have been scattered into the diaspora, just as, as the earthly church was scattered for God's own purpose, scattered to spread the gospel, scattered to tell a dying world that Jesus is Lord, scattered to carry forth the word message. Many have been scattered, many, and yet God has a promise, a promise of a great homecoming. Hebrews 13 and 14 says, for here we have no lasting city, but we looking, we are looking for the city that is to come. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Church, there is still work to be done to tell a dying world about the love of Christ, so, to serve the infirmed while witnessing to them that the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life. To minister to the sick while telling them that he was bruised for our iniquities and by his stripes we are healed. To go into the prisons to set the captives free, to give food to the hungry, clothes to the naked, shelter to the homeless, 
hope to the hopeless and even in sight to the blind, for there is none so blind as those who will not see. My brothers and sisters, Hebrews is not calling us to martyrdom, but rather we are called to endure. We are called to endure. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight uh, that the sin that clings so closely. Uh, let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Lay aside, lay aside every weight that has you burdened down. Everything that has you struggling. Everything that's holding you back. Lay it aside. Just lay it aside. You can't run if you're all burdened down or weighted down. You have got to shed some stuff to run this race. You've got to be dressed to run this race. And after you have shed the weight, whatever that weight might be, then examine yourself and, and then shed every sin that clings so closely. Even those pet sins, even those favorite sins, even those sins that you see as just a baby, just a tiny, just a teeny weeny thing. It don't bother nobody. Let them go so you can run this race. And while you are running this race, don't focus on, on the way in front of you. Don't focus on the track in front of you. Don't be concerned about the obstacles in your way. Don't be concerned about the roadblocks you might encounter. Just run the race. Run the race. Just run with perseverance. Run without quitting. Run with persistence. And while you are running this race, keep your eyes focused on Jesus. We are not called to martyrdom, but to endurance. Don't give up and don't quit. Whether running is is triumph or whether your running leads to tragedy. Run with faith. Whether it's success or whether it's failure, run with faith. You might be weak. You might get weak. You might get weary. Run. Run on by faith. You might uh, uh, get faint. You run on by faith. We are called to endure by faith. The Bible tells me in Isaiah 40 and 31 but they uh, that that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. And finally, finally, my brothers and sisters, Hebrews 6 says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Seek the Lord while he may be found and run this race to finish to the finish line. Run this race to finish the course. Run this race keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus. Keeping your eyes fixed on the one who is the lily of the valley. Fixed on the one who is the bright and morning star. Fixed on the one who is my bridge over troubled waters. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, and I can sing with confidence how I got over, how I got over. My soul looks back and wonder how I got over. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. What a word we've heard today. Pre uh, Pastor, why don't you just open this place up so somebody out there may want to give their life to Christ after hearing this, keeping their eyes stayed on Christ. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Pastor Robinson. Life is like a roller coaster. It has ups and it has downs. You might have good days and you might have bad days. But faith is not a situational thing. Faith is a constant. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus regardless of what you're going through. My brothers and sisters, in order to fix your eyes on Jesus, you need to know him. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You need to know him. Come seek him. Come to him. Accept him. It's not complicated and it's not complex. Ask him into your heart. If 
take charge of your life, that you might live for him. Confess that you are a sinner. We've all sinned and fallen short. Every last one of us. But Jesus, the grace of our Lord, is sufficient. Is sufficient for all of us. I invite you today to take this opportunity to come to Christ. If you don't know him, if you don't know him, make a profession of faith. Realize that I need a Savior. I need help in this life. Just come to Christ. Pray with me this prayer. Lord, I realize that I have fallen short. I realize that I've sinned and missed the mark. And I realize that I need a Savior. I come now asking you to come into my heart and take charge of my life. I believe by faith that you are the Son of God. I believe by faith that you died on the cross at Calvary and that you were raised on the third day. I believe by faith that you are seated at the right hand of God the Father. Take charge of me, O Lord, that I might live a faithful life for you. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer, asking Jesus to come into your heart, welcome to the household of faith. Amen. And now, go forth and learn the language that we speak. Get involved with the church. Get involved with the ministries. Get involved with the Bible studies. Be active and productive in the congregation of faith that you might have a mighty witness, that you might have a good report, that you might tell a dying world, Jesus is Lord. God bless you. God keep you. In Jesus' name. Amen. After 222 years, there is still work to be done. We are inviting you to come join us at Quinn Chapel. Uh, the information, the uh, contacts, it's all will be shown after this uh, message. Uh, and so uh, come and join us. Let us do a great work. I'm excited about what God wants to do for us. He is the leader. If we follow him in the midst of this storm, confusing times, we can make it. Amen and amen. God bless you. Look to see you next time.